Good morning, St. James. It is wonderful to have all of us together this day. For those of you who are joining us online, a word of welcome to you as well. Um, as we come into worship today, it, it is my responsibility to share with everyone in the passing of our former Reverend Bob Folkers. Bob passed away yesterday morning. Um, I am told that the service will not be this week, it will be next week. I don't know any more information than that from place or time, but um, if you would please just remember Connie and the family as Bob has gone to be with the Lord. So, um, as we get ready for worship today, we are in the midst of that sermon series entitled, Are We There Yet? And I came across a piece that made the observation, you know what, you need to have direction. You, you can be going a million miles an hour, but if you don't have any direction, you're going really fast nowhere. And so for us, we need direction. We'll eventually get there. God is with us. God is guiding us. God is leading us. We just sometimes got to be a little patient. Doesn't always get to happen on our timeline. Doesn't even get to happen as fast as we always want it to. But I would remind us that we are to stay engaged with God because God gives us the direction. The pace will take care of itself. Amen. As we come into worship this morning, Mamie, if you would please.
me, what's that called when you do that? All the way, is there a word for that? Glissando. I took piano for 12 years and I didn't know that. Glissando. Good morning, St. James. Glad that you are here uh, in person. For those joining us uh, online, thank you uh, as well. We plan, for, we plan for everything and then technology comes in, right? <laughs> Regarding online, uh, last week we had the video but no audio. To let you know that the audio is now posted on YouTube. So the audio is there for last week with all the slides. And we're now, I think, currently casting audio on YouTube and hopefully Facebook is working. Maybe. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is that, Matt, you really should hire somebody to help you with all this technical stuff. Maybe an executive director, associate pastor, someone with a PhD in organizational dynamics. Well, maybe. I'm talking about me. Maybe I should be doing my job and helping. <laughs> Something comes up every single week, so we're working on this. So um, another piece that you need to know, uh, Regarding, so you all know we're here in the Fellowship Hall because of air conditioning issues. Air conditioning here, there, water heaters, men's restroom, foundation issues, both places. We've got some stuff going on that um, isn't in our budget. <laughs> you all need to know that the leadership is meeting today in order to kind of get our minds wrapped around that. And we'll be sharing some information with you over the next couple of weeks. Because um, if it's not technology, it's weather. <laughs> That is, that is affecting us. So we're going to try to uh, get ahead of that. And just so you know, we have designated, uh, if you are interested, and it's at both campuses, so we're just having one designated line. Uh, we're calling it uh, the Repair Fund, Eric's Vacation Fund. I was kidding. Thank you. <laughs> totally kidding. Um, something better than Repair Fund, but if you're interested, can mark any gifts. Um, we'll make sure that we get to those places. So... Let's get to announcements, okay? Pull out. Oh, I forgot to announce. Seeing you. Your husband's back. Yes, and he's dressed just like you. Did you? <laughs> get your 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> ben was one of our adult sponsors who went with uh, the youth out to Loveland, Colorado. We've got a couple of our youth at the back table. I'd say wave, but the camera's not going to see you. <laughs> um, so proof that they have come back. There are stories. I've heard that there was a boat on the whitewater rafting that might have tipped or come close to tipping. And Ben's going, no, 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 no. So over the next few weeks, we're going to hear from our youth, uh, and they can tell us the stories. If you follow them on Facebook, our Facebook page, you saw all those wonderful pictures. They were in service. They, I'm surprised that some of you are here this morning. I figured you would have been sleeping in today. So glad that you're here. Glad that you're back. Um, announcements in the bulletin. Just a reminder from the top left of what's happening today as we move down to the bottom right, things to keep on your calendar, save the dates. Um, today, we are having a neighborhood party for uh, this campus. We're going to be at Birchwood Park. I think I'm getting my directions down. We're going to be at Birchwood Park for two to four, from 2 to 4. You also need to know this one, that um, the sign-up sheet, someone was responsible for that, <laughs> and someone didn't put it out. So we need some of our members to show up this afternoon. We're going to set up at 1.30. If you've got 30 minutes, if you've got all two hours, apparently there's bocce ball and lawn darts. You don't want to see, I know, that's what I was going for. Lawn darts, really? Yeah. Um, if you are available, we, when we did this at the Franklin campus, there were about 60 community members who showed up. So if you are free anytime this afternoon, come get some ice cream. Come meet our neighbors, come um, be the church for our neighborhood and meet some folks and hopefully we can, we can grow our fellowship. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, let us stand our next hymn, number 641.
please be seated. Abigail was at last service. Um, so, we come now to that time in... A... Thank you. Ab anyway, we come now to that time in our worship service. We've gathered together as family and friends to share our joys and our concerns with one another. And so, um, let's start with joys. What joys do we have? Okay, 34 years ago today, I made Jackie the happiest person in the world. <laughs> today is our obviously 34th anniversary. And on that note, today would have been Bob and Connie's 70th, 70th anniversary yeah. today. Yeah. So. Uh-oh, now there's a response. Rebuttal time, please. No, actually, I have one. Today is my official last day of re my last day of working at UNMC. I have retired from the corporate world. Yay! Congratulations. So, I am so happy. <laughs> Retirement is a wonderful, wonderful thing yes. for about a week, I'm told. Well, actually, my sister and I have our own business, small oh. business slash hobby. For IRS, it's hobby. Uh, I checked. It legally, legally it is a hobby. I checked. So, <laughs> why, why are you looking, for those of you who can't see, why are you looking at the former IRS agent? <laughs> I looked. It is officially a hobby. Uh, okay. So. Well. I'll be working with that and taking some burn off my sister, who's been doing well, the majority lately. Well, congratulations and congratulations. <laughs> other, other, ah, oh, blue sheets, yes, thank you. If you have a blue sheet, hold it up, and um, our ushers will, will bring those up to me so that I can, can have those. And Betty, did, oh, you were just, were you pointing? Okay. Uh, Good morning, St. James. I am got tears of joy in my eyes. My grandson graduated from the Allegiant uh, Airlines course. He's been there for three months, and every day he has cried, and every day I have cried with him. But thanks to Bill Craig and his, his uh, happy remarks that he gave me to give my grandson, my grandson called me last night, and he said he passed. So now we're just waiting for an assignment for him for Allegiant Airlines. Excellent. Congratulations to your grandson graduating. And now comes the next fun part, employment. <laughs> then comes retirement and making sure the IRS isn't mad at you. All right. <laughs> ben, what do you got? I, I just wanted to uh, just say that, you know, we had a fulfilling week at uh, <clears throat> the youth mission trip and everybody's arrived safely through all of the the work and the fun so um, just wanted to you know thank everyone for the prayers absolutely Hi, Hi, Sid. I, I just wanted to say thank you for the travel prayers that I got for this last week when I went to Montana with Bill to see my brother I had not realized it had been almost six years since we had seen each other, but my brother did, and he really wanted us to be out there. And now that we're getting at the ages that we are right now, we made a pact to see each other at least once a year from now on. Excellent. <laughs> so Excellent. good blessings, and it was a beautiful time. Good. Thank you. Other joys? Come on back. Yeah, everybody thinks Abigail's got it easy till they got to run the mic, and then we all have a different understanding. So the uh, the mission trip, you, we we call it the youth. It was for the youth, but make mo make no mistake. I I at least from Ben's perspective, my perspective of him when he returned, the changes in the adults, right? Because we say it's it's focused for the youth, but I if you when you get the stories, and I encourage you to talk to the adults that were there, um, the changes that occurred in them as well. It's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. Yes, so thank you to my husband for going, and thank you for the youth for putting up with him. <laughs> well, for, for Ben and for Brent and for everybody who went, we are, we are thankful. And um, as Pastor Eric did share, we are going to take two or three Sundays and, let, and hear some different voices from the youth trip so that we can hear how wonderful that experience was. So... Other joys this morning. 
Fair enough. Yeah, for the record, they have put the mark on the floor for me again, and I have been told I'm not allowed to move past it, so if I look weird and awkward today, it's... I know, that's not unusual. Thank you for observing that, too. But uh, a little more weird and awkward is because I'm not allowed to pass this line. Okay, how about concerns? What concerns would we... Roger and then Jerry. I've been out of town for the last couple weekends. A good friend of mine passed away in South Dakota, and I went up to attend his funeral. So prayers for the Daniel Martin family. Prayers for your friend Daniel Martin. Good Irishman. You, well, if you're going to be Irish, what other day other than St. Patrick's Day should you be born on? The only thing, was he a redhead? Ah, forget it. All right. <laughs> Roger, what, what would you share with us? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, lift up Craig Nordiker, um, still uh, uh, struggling with some, some pain and issues. So um, please uh, keep Craig in your prayers. Yes, continue to pray for, for Craig. Yes, uh, um, requesting prayers for my sister-in-law, Shirley Faircloth, whose husband died after a a long illness. Uh, so prayers for the Robert Faircloth family. Very good. Other, other concerns that we would share with one another today. I would lift up that um, Judy Neiman got a new shoulder last Tuesday and Laurel Wheeler is getting a new shoulder next Tuesday. So, um, evidently, that's the new great rage. <laughs> but would ask that we would keep them in our prayers. Uh, I was given this also at 9.30. For John and Bryn Whitehurst and family, Bryn was a former lay pastor here at the church. Their home exploded last week. All the material things were destroyed, but fortunately, no one was at home, so they are safe. Uh, but we need to keep them in our prayers. Ah, oh, Danette would have us celebrate another retirement. Uh, Roger retired on Friday as well. So congratulations. I hear tell there is a family industry that's a hobby that if you wanted to work together, it's not against the IRS and you could help do that. I may be running a theme now. All right. Then, Brenda Curran asked, prayers for my three-year-old granddaughter, uh, Everly. She will be undergoing ear surgery on Wednesday, July 3. Prayers for a skilled medical team and a quick healing. So we pray for her as well in that, in that procedure. So we keep that in our prayers. Any other prayers, joys, concerns that we would share with one another today. Well, if not here in just a moment, I'm going to invite us to take some time for some, some quiet meditation to lift up to God whatever is on your heart, on your mind. Following that, I'll offer up a pastoral prayer. And as we traditionally do, we bring this time to close with that which Jesus taught us. So let's take our moment now for some quiet meditation. God of wonder. God, you are a God of grace and a God of mercy. You have created and instilled with each one of us an understanding of who we are, of how each one of us can say, I am. For you have created us uniquely. You have created each one of us in, in a special way that is not like anyone else. Help us, gracious God, to, to recognize that. Some days it's easy, gracious God, to, to appreciate the gifts and the grace that we have. Other days, gracious God, we have to work very hard 
to see who we are in, in your light. To not be who the world would try to make us to be, not be that dark place or that struggle, but simply to recognize, gracious God, that you love us for who we are and who you created us to be. Almighty God, we have taken some time this morning to share our joys, to offer up our concerns, to celebrate all of the things that are milestones in our life and and the things that, that bring a smile, but also for those who are going through a struggle things that that they are in need of. Gracious God, we know that we can give it to you. We place it into your hands. That doesn't mean we have to stop talking with you about it, God. It simply means we don't have to carry it by ourselves. For we are all too aware, gracious God, that sometimes the answer to our prayers is to be the answer to the prayer, but to do it as you would call us to, to do it as you would lead us to, to be who you have created us to be. Almighty God, as we've come together, as we are a community and a family, we now choose to join our voices together in that which your Son taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. One of the traditions that are a part of St. James is any time we have a fifth Sunday, we get to do a hymn sing. So, yeah, we get, kind of gets excited, and you all get to pick the hymns. So, yep, now you all are starting to grab your hymnals. So we're going to sing four or five hymns. And um, so if you haven't already started looking through your hymnals, I'm going to talk for about ten more seconds. So that you, I know, 10 seconds, I don't think any of you believe I actually can talk for that short amount of time. Okay, who's got a hymn? (laughs) Dwayne, what do you got for us? 717. I don't have a hymnal, so I'm going to... Battle Hymn of the Republic. Battle Hymn of the Republic, the first... First verse? First verse of 717, Battle Hymn of the Republic. You got an amen next to you. Ah. Oh, there you go. Victory in Jesus. We we got there. Okay. Um, What verse you want to sing? One. Okay, we're gonna sing verse one of hymn number three seven.
somebody in the back, otherwise I'm moving my way back this way. Yes, Janet? 314, and then Sharon, and then Betty, and that's how we're going to do it. 314. In the garden. In the garden. Third verse? Sure. Third verse. piano pause and it all falls into place just like it's supposed to. Sharon, what do you got? What? 601. 601. Thy word is a lamp. Thy word is a lamp. Uh, first verse? There is? Yes. Because first there are two verse. verses. First. First verse. All right. Yes, I do. I mean, yes, he does. First verse. for your scripture reading. Please rise for the reading of the scripture. But 
Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you. And this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, my name to remember for all generations. Thus ends the reading of the word. You, You know, I usually like to start off with something funny, and I came across a seminary joke. It's not very funny, but it fits the sermon series, so go with me, all right? It seemed that there was a group of seminary students who were walking through the hallway of a seminary one day when Jesus appeared in front of them. And Jesus said to them, Who do you say that I am? The students all stopped, and they... They looked at each other, and they looked at Jesus, and they said, well, you're the eschatological manifestation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> to which Jesus went, huh? <laughs> yeah, I tell that joke because I can say the words fast, not because it's funny. But it does, but I got one applause. All right. But it does fit into our sermon series. A discussion of which we were spending the summer talking about, are we there yet? And today I want to talk about I am. Who am I? In the midst of considering the, the scripture lesson and how we move forward in, in that. You know, growing up as, as children, when we were in elementary school, we really were just trying to, to we, we just did whatever we were told to do, right? We, we were excited when we got to be the line leader. Right? That, that defined who we were. If I got to be the line leader, the day was great. And then we get to middle school. Ah, middle school. That, that wonderful time of trying to figure out who we are, but it's in the midst of that that people start to go, oh yeah, you're, and they name your parents, kid. Right? Now, I, I don't know about you, but you know, growing up as a preacher's kid, you know, when I got into middle school, they looked at me and they went, oh yeah, you're Cole Fowler's kid. You're a preacher's kid. Now, every industry, every business, every child of a parent who grows up in that, there's a, a stereotype, shall we say. Preacher's kids are no different. Some of you might be aware of this. Now, there are, within some preacher's kids, who are angelic and wonderful. And they do everything that they want to do and, and, and say everything correctly, just the right way, with the right lilt in their voice. And Eric is back there, Pastor Eric is, because he's a preacher's kid going, I am now describing him. That's one side of the preacher's kid. Save it, Tracy, you can come at it in a second. Then there's the other side of the preacher's kids, right? <laughs> it's in stereo today. I got Tracy and Jermaine. You know, the, the rowdy one, right? The, the one who, who causes trouble, right? The one who, who, who doesn't do or say quite the things the way they're supposed to do it or say it. Uh, maybe do or don't hit curfews at the right time, you know, yeah, maybe a little bit of me. Well, maybe. And see, the, the reality is, is that we all know that those stereotypes are, there are times where, yes, I, I was a little bit of, uh, of the not angel side. 
but my dad was considerably bigger than me. So there were times where I was on the angel side. And so we, we begin to live into, who am I? And we get through those middle school and high school days. We get into college. We get into the world. But it's once we get into the world that the world starts to say, you know what? Well, you're the fourth generation of military, so which branch of the service are you going to go into? Or you're really good with math, so when are you going to get your accounting degree? Or you really work well in music, so what band are you going to play in? You know, and the world tries to start saying who I am. And for whatever reason, people begin to think, oh, well, if that's who I'm supposed to be, then, then that's what we start working at, right? We, we start believing we're supposed to, to step into these these roles, these I am statements of, of who we are supposed to be. And we think that's how we're supposed to live our life. I mean, a few weeks ago we were looking at Moses having gotten out of Egypt, having found himself in Midian, having gotten married, having children, watching a flock, part of a family, part of a community, and within the question, are we there yet, we finished that sermon suggesting that, you know what, Moses probably thought he was. He probably thought he was there. Who he was, where he was supposed to live, what it was he was supposed to do. He probably believed he was there. Now we also agreed that we knew that wasn't going to be the end of Moses' journey. We know how this story works out. And within the, the, the docu-series that I had been watching, it, it had, in moments, Moses talking with Zephora, and, and they would look at Mount Sinai, and they would see this light on top of the mountain. But as the scripture Jermaine read for us points out, it's a holy mountain. So, so no one had gone up there to see what was going on at the top of that mountain, until finally one day Moses is out caring for his flock, Right? And he finds himself face to face with this, this, this bush that is on fire. But the scripture reminds us that while it's on fire, it is not being consumed. And so his curiosity gets the better of him. And he goes heading towards this burning bush. And as he gets to it, all of a sudden he hears a voice coming to him saying, Moses, take off your shoes you are now standing on holy ground. Think about that for a minute. Think about how your day was going versus how your day is going now. And, and you know, being invited to take off your shoes, it, in our day, in our age, you know, it's, hey, don't get those muddy shoes on my clean floor kind of mindset, right? To take off your shoes. It's not what God was inviting Moses to do when God said that to Moses. As I did some studying and some reading, really what Moses was being invited by God to do was not just take off his shoes, but to understand that he was shedding the old. He was metaphorically taking off the old by taking off his shoes to do something new. That God was calling him in a new direction to do a new thing as to who he was going to be. And taking off the shoes represented that. And so Moses, in the midst of taking off his shoes and recognizing what's going on and God telling him what he's about to go and do because he's not there yet, Moses begins to do what anybody back then did or most of us would do. He starts looking for excuses as to why he can't do it. Now, in the midst of that struggle, it is also understood historically that Moses had a stutter. And I want you to think about this for just one second. You're looking at a burning bush. The burning bush is now talking to you. It is telling you you are about to go to the one place you have no desire to go back to, to lead a group of people out who you know aren't going to follow you out, and you're being told to go, and you're looking for excuses. And can you imagine not only how hard it is for him to come up with the excuses, but even how hard it is for him to talk. 
And it's in the midst of all of that, he finally says, you know what? In that day, in that age, the only way they're going to follow me is if I can give them a name. Proof that I have talked to you. Proof that I have connected with you. Proof that they are supposed to follow me. Who am I supposed to say has sent me? And it is the one time in the 66 books, hundreds of thousands of words, thousands of chapters, that God pronounces God's name. He says, I am who I am. In the Hebrew, it is pronounced Yahweh. It is why for thousands of years within the Jewish faith, that name was not allowed to be said. It was held as one of the holy of holies. You, we found different names for God, but you never got to say Yahweh. I am who I am. You see, God was helping Moses understand, I am who I was, I am who I am, I am who I will be. And that is who you are going to tell them has come to rescue you. And so they live into that moment, that, that understanding. Moses even understands that not only is God saying, I am, but Moses is beginning to understand who the new I am is for him as well. And, and so that's kind of where we are. We, we're, we're still living into, I don't care how old or young you are, we are still living into an understanding of who I am. Regardless of you know, what, what we might think, we just talked about it, there are people and businesses and industries who try to convince us of who we are. But can I invite us to understand that to know who I am as a person, and for us as St. James to understand who we are as a church, has some work that has to be done. The first is to recognize we have to unbecome to become. Clear as mud, right? So, Unbecoming means I've got to take all the stuff the world has been trying to convince me that I am. That the world says, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, that's how you're supposed to do that job. Oh, that's how you're supposed to live your life. We're not supposed to live our lives, who I am, by the world's standards. We have to unbecome that and become who God has created us to be. To understand that God has said, you need to be this wonderful person I've created you to be. And that takes some work, right? That, that takes self-reflection. That, that, that takes time to look in the mirror and think to yourself, okay, as I deal with this, I'm not supposed to be that person. I'm to be this person. Let me put it to you this way. You ever done something that just weighed you down, took all the joy out of your life, I mean, you spent more time like this than you did like this because it just seemed to take every ounce of energy you had to get up and move one foot in front of the other because the world had said, this is what you're supposed to do until that one day, that, that one day when you get to say, I'm retired, that one day when you get to take all that stuff off your shoulders because God is there saying, you don't have to carry it anymore. That's not who I created you to be. And all of a sudden, you find yourself standing up and feeling like you can breathe. Isn't, isn't that just, that's an amazing thing to experience, right? It, it's beginning to understand who I am. I don't have to carry what the world wants me to carry. I get to walk with God. That is who I am. We have to understand that we are uniquely made, that God has made each and every single one of us different. We're not all the same. We don't all look the same. We don't all sound the same. We don't all do the same thing. We're not all created to do the same thing. God has made each and every single one of us unique. Pastor Craig Groeschel once made the observation of which I, I happen to agree with, in which he made it for all of us who heard it to understand, is, is that God created each one of us to be a masterpiece. Where we are in our lives, who we are, 
We are each a masterpiece. And he said, and I knew exactly what he was thinking when he said it, he goes, you know, we get to thinking about that. We get to thinking about masterpieces. Now, none of you need to go amen with what I'm about to say. But I don't look like a Rembrandt. Okay, laughter was okay. You know, I don't look like a masterpiece, because we know what masterpieces are, right? Pieces of beautiful art, or things that are created, or, or things that are done, or, or people who lead, or the, the things that are said, or, or acted upon, and we look at those things and we think, those are masterpieces. I'm not a masterpiece. But the simple truth is, is yes, you are. We just look at it through the wrong lens. See, we're looking at it through the world's lens, and the world would have us believe that's a masterpiece. When we look through it in God's eyes, who I am, who you are, right here, right now, in this moment, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, is a masterpiece. No one can take that from you, because that is who God has created you to be. You are created in an amazingly unique masterpiece. And that is, when we look in the mirror every day, our ability to say, that is who I am. Now, is it scary sometimes? Yes. You know, to, to, to challenge the world, to, to tell the world that, no, what you've tried to make me is not who I am, can be a little scary. They can try to keep trying to push us into that. But that's not where we need to stand. We stand together. We stand with God. We recognize that we are a community that continues moving forward. And we also have to understand is that once we begin to understand who I am, that doesn't mean you have to give up everything. You know, when Moses came down off of the mountain, knowing where he was going, knowing who he was, he didn't come down and go, well, I guess I'm not married anymore. Well, I guess I don't have any kids well, I guess I'm not part of a community. I guess I'm not part of the family. I guess I don't have any sheep to watch. No. None of that became undone. He was still all of those things. He just understood how he was moving forward in the image of God. And so that's what I'm inviting us to do today, is to recognize that when Moses was in front of that burning bush, we are the same. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open. We begin to hear God speak into our lives about who I am. As an individual, to understand that we as a church recognize, you know what, we were this. We are here now. But I promise you, we are not done yet. We are still got places to go. God has said... This is who I am going to be. And that is what it holds true for St. James as well. So let me invite us to remember, when we leave here today, are we there yet? No. We're not there yet. But we know who we are because we can look in the mirror and say, I am a child of God. Would you pray with me? Gracious God. I thank you for our opportunity of coming together. I thank you for your creating each one of us uniquely. Help us to remember that we are a masterpiece. That in your eyes we are wonderfully and perfectly made. Help us, gracious God, to continue to live into the understanding of who I am. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward. As they're doing that, allow me an opportunity to share with us these words out of Exodus, the 35th chapter and the 5th verse. Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Let whoever is of a generous heart bring the Lord's offering. Our ushers will now wait upon us. <laughs>
hymn this morning is in our blue hymnals, number 77, How Great Thou Art. Let's stand together and sing the first verse. <laughs> starting to come together? I mean, this story of Moses that we're laying out this summer, it now today we've gotten this piece of I am a masterpiece. Great way to put it, by the way, Pastor Matt. Thank you, thank you. I would put it differently. And you know how I would put it, so join in when it feels familiar. I would suggest that we could say I am, first, loved by God. Second, I am a cog pal, a child of God, a person of worth. And third, I am called to go and love my neighbor. 2 to 4 p.m., up at the park. I'll see you all there. Go in peace. 